Hi everybody, welcome to Wingman Wisdom. Today I'm going to do a follow-up on yesterday's video. If you missed it, a link to it is in the description below. Yesterday I shared a riddle with you that I heard that made me think. And have you ever bought a car, for example, and all of a sudden as soon as you buy it or you start liking a car, they're everywhere. Well, following up on yesterday's video, uh, I started seeing these stories that were sort of connected with the topic yesterday. So the riddle went something like this. It was, why do we do the things we do when we know the things we know? Because we do the things we learn, not the things we know. And when do we start learning? As little bitty people, little bitty crawling people. And we learn over time. And whatever we learn becomes the norm. And it takes a lot to break you out of a habit of something that you have learned. So I expressed in yesterday's video about my concern for all of us, but particularly about children and what they are learning. I'm going to read you a, a couple of stories, and I want to hear what you think. You don't have to agree with me. In fact, the purpose of this virtual campfire is to get you to just stop for a minute, pretend, and think. And maybe reassess where you are, not to agree with me, but to think, to ponder, and then to maybe set your compass in a different direction or reaffirm the direction you're going in. But take the time to think and decide on your own. This comes from the Daily Mail, which is the highest paid circulation newspaper in the UK. So it's a biggie. And yes, this is all about kids. And I'm not trying to take a side. I'm just trying to show you things that you may not know. You know I know, but you may not know, no. Pupils as young as seven are being encouraged to wear a badge which displays whether they use male, female, or non-binary pronouns. What happened to reading, writing, and arithmetic? It says lessons are part of school's diversity week run by LGBT charity just like us. More than 6,000 primary and secondary schools have signed up for this. 6,000 of them. Well, that's the UK. Can never happen here. Want to bet? Uh, it says, pupils as young as seven are being encouraged to wave rainbow flags and wear a badge which displays whether they use male, female, or non-binary pronouns. This goes on and on and on. And, and so what's the big deal? Is that the purpose of schools? Is it to condition them? If we are what we learn, aren't we teaching children or they're learning something? Is that what we want them to become? Or aren't schools there to teach them how to think, how to add and subtract and read and write? I don't know. I don't know. What are our rights in going to a public school or a private school? I really wonder. You know, I, I don't think you can just go into a class, and, and but, but at the same time, how are we supposed to take a teacher's word? Well, I don't teach anything wrong. <laughs> and maybe in their mind, things that they're teaching aren't wrong, but it's in their mind. What is in the best interest of the child, the student? What do we want them to become 20 years from now? What do we want them to think? How do we want them to believe about our country, about each other, respect and responsibility? If we're te teaching them that they can be anything, you're going to, here's something, I'm going to show you something in a minute. You're going to go, oh my God, I didn't know that. It's frightening. And I don't know what the answer is. At least it's frightening to me. It may be no big deal to you. And that is okay. You're welcome to share a different opinion around this virtual campfire. This story says, record one in four high school students are gay or bisexual. Around a quarter of high school students identify as gay, bisexual, or have a more fluid sexuality, official data suggests. The CDC, that's our CDC, and Prevention's biannual youth report found that just 75.5% of 14 to 18 year olds said they were heterosexual in 2021, a new low. U.S. high schoolers identifying as LGB or questioning. Look at this. Over time in 2015, and look what's happened. How has that happened? Has it always been that way? They're just more willing to come out, so to speak? Or is there something else going on? Are the lessons they're learning in class, in watching the videos, watching TV commercials, and all the different influences around them, is that skewing that this way? 
What's going to happen? What are they going to be like in 20 years? Does it matter? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? It continues. It says, number of children identifying as LGB hits record high. I don't care what you are. I just don't want you to rub it in my grandson's face. And I'm tired of having it rubbed in my face. I'm very resentful when I see certain things on TV. Subtle. <laughs> That's supposed to be normal? Not in my world. Let me know what you think. It says, experts say the explosion in alternative sexualities among children can be partly attributed to increased acceptance. That's true. Bah, I want to be accepted. Do Dr. Molly Blackburn, who teaches sexuality studies at Ohio State University, told Daily Mail, it's an increase in acceptance from both parents and society. It's creeping normalcy is the term for it. It's, well, it's, grad it's, just, it's, it's like when you were a child and your parents maybe put you up against the, the door jam and marked with a pencil how tall you were. And you grew. It's like, I didn't even realize I was growing. But you grow. It's creeping normalcy. Accepting people creates a context where a child will be more willing to say that they're gay. She does not think the actual number of children who are truly gay, lesbian or bisexual, has changed in recent years, but that young people are more willing to admit it. Now, 75% say they're heterosexual. I don't know. Now, here's one. Here's one. This is the one that I just, it's like, I couldn't believe it. I just found it. It says... UK schools allow students to identify as <clears throat> No, no, that's meow, meow, meow. Dinosaurs. Wow, that's an elephant. And even the moon. UK schools allow students to identify as cats, horses, dinosaurs, even the moon. This was uh this was just last week. It's not just your school system that's a mess. Let's go over the UK where a report from the Telegraph paints a picture of a school system that is allowing students to identify as cats. It has led to an incident where a student at a school in Wales is said to meow when answering questions from a teacher. Meow. In another incident, tensions boiled over when a 13-year-old girl was labeled despicable by a teacher after the girl dared to question a classmate's claim that she identified as a cat, according to the Daily Mail. Now the stories are rolling in from across the country. One student is said to be identifying as a dinosaur. Another claims to be a horse. <laughs> if that isn't crazy enough, one student reportedly wears a cape and wants to be recognized as a moon. Is this disturbing to you? No big deal. They'll grow out of it. I wanted to be a cowboy when I grew up. Yeah, but you didn't go like a cowboy to school. I didn't. I didn't go as a spaceman, an astronaut, and a baseball player. I played that. But they, what, what's going on? Is this a big deal? Did you know about this? Yeah, but that's just the UK. <laughs> I don't think so. What happens over there, it's going to happen over here. Why? Because it can. It continues on. Look at this. Oh, aren't they cute? Those kids dressing up. In the current climate, this cannot be dismissed as innocent examples of imaginative play, but further examples of the confusing and harmful ideologies which are continuing to escalate in our schools. Andrea Williams, CEO of Christian Concern, told the Daily Mail. This story exposes the confusion and untruths being embedded in schools which are developing into a public health crisis. Do you think this is a crisis? I do. I believe it's a crisis that we haven't even begun to see what the craziness is, but we will. There's no value to value anymore. What has happened to our humanity? It's okay to play and pretend, in my opinion, but at some point you got to be real. At some point, schools have to do what they were supposed to do. Teach people to read, write, and think. Add, subtract, divide, multiply, read, understand the world is not about you. The world doesn't care about you. The reality show makes you think it's all about you. No, you're just a little piece of this thing that's spinning around. We all are. And to think that it's all about you or me or me, you know, a sheep, a goat, a whatever. <laughs> It's just sad. Again, I'm not trying to import, impart my thoughts to make you agree with me. And you may think I'm totally off my rocker and this is no big deal. I think it's a really big deal. And I think that by me even bringing it up, it's like, oh, I don't think I ever brought that up. I don't care. I'm at a point in my life, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm trying to be thoughtful and sensible. 
sensitive to other people that have different lifestyles. I'm okay with that. But don't do the things that are going to manifest themselves. And to deny that you are is a lie. You cannot, people cannot be so oblivious. Are there that many teachers out there and administrators and people in, in social media that, they, well, it's no big deal. You know, it just, it's a gradual creeping west. What we got to do as a culture. Let me go back to the story. It says, meanwhile, here in the U.S., one Florida school district has banned students from wearing furry clothing accessories, including tails and ears, to hopefully stop a trend of students barking, grunting, and meowing at each other while at school. Brevard County Schools General Counsel Paul Gibbs told the board he's confused by the trend, but noted that students wore dog collars when he was in school. Yeah, but they weren't trying to be a dog, though, a board member reportedly told Gibbs. So what are your thoughts? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be able to go and actually monitor, audit, I guess they say, some classes in school? I'd love to do that. I've got the time to do it now. I could sit back, I promise it, mm, but I don't think they let me go. They don't want me to hear. When kids grab their phone, and there are some children that grab their phone and go, this isn't right, I'm gonna record it. And they record it on their smartphone. And then you hear the, 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 the spewing of this perverted stuff that the teachers are, are spewing. What do they say? Oh, that's an isolated case. It, that's one in a million. I'm not so sure. I don't think that any of us can leave our biases at home and, 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 and not take them with us, including school teachers. And that's okay. But in my view, we have to accept our responsibility, our first responsibility as a school teacher is to teach. And to teach, you have to be situationally aware that you have a responsibility as a teacher, a big one, not to impart what you think, but impart what is going to be best for the child, for the student. What's going to help mold them into a creative thinker, not one that is just a robot that goes, goes here for the quick answers and who do I support, what political party do I support, and bah, become another sheep. I went on too long in this video, and for that I'm sorry, but yesterday's video did get some response and a couple of people did email me. We're not happy about me even bringing the subject up. You know what that does? Sorry, but it makes me want to bring it up more because I think it needs to be talked about. Why do we do the things we do when we know the things we know? Because we do the things we learn. What are kids learning? What are other people learning at work about you? What's okay? Being lazy? Stealing just a little bit? Taking off a little bit early? What are people learning about you? People learning that you're thrifty, that you're, you're flawed, but you're resourceful? What are they learning about you? It's important to impart lessons, not teach, teach. But the most important things are those subtle things that people learn, cleanliness, respect, responsibility, consequences for negative behavior. You're not a cat in school. You're not a horse as bad as you want to be a horse or a moon, that's not your place. You go be a moon in your backyard when you get home from class, but for right now, you gotta learn social studies. But when we allow anybody to do anything, anytime they want to, and we say it's okay, and if you try to stop them, you're the enemy, we got an issue. I'd like to know what you think. Again, I'm a former campground owner. I, I don't have all the answers. I'm a flawed man who makes lots of you know, stupid choices, Things that I know I shouldn't have done, it's like, oh, why did I do that? Because we do the things we learn. I want to encourage you to take time to ponder, to think, to be a little bit more reserved before you form a final opinion, and to always be open-minded. But by God, stand your ground. Somebody needs to stand their ground. Somebody needs to speak up and say, I don't support this, and I'm not afraid to say that I don't support it. So thank you for joining me. Again, I do consultation work with some of the best RV dealers in the country. They don't agree with most of the things, or some of the things at least, that I say. My opinions are mine. They're not theirs. But I'll tell you what, they're the most honest RV dealers that I know. If you're thinking about buying an RV, or when you're thinking about buying one, consider doing business with one of the RV dealers I trust. 
These are good people, not perfect people, but really good people that care and want to earn your business. And if they have a problem, you have a problem and it's their fault, I promise you, they will be one of the first ones to go, uh oh, we screwed up and they'll do their very best to make it right. So thank you for watching. Sorry I went on so long today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below. I read every comment. My personal contact information is in the description. You can leave me a voicemail if you'd like. I listen to those voicemails and get back to as many people as possible. So again, thank you. Hope you have a good rest of your week. I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home.